luxury liner on the West Coast is ready to set sail from San Diego. The Viking Serenade has been undergoing some renovations here. Now they're showing it off to help a good cause. Jack White joins us live on location. We saw you from the deck there a couple minutes ago. How are you doing? I'll tell you, this is the place to be. I came down along the waterfront today. I don't think it has ever looked quite as nice as it does today because of this beautiful vessel that's in port. We want to show it off just a little bit. I'm going to walk along here because here on this ship, they have something very special, and I want to show it down here. It is a special bar and ballroom, and it just kind of hangs out over the sun deck. I am 12 stories above the water line. This ship, you may have noticed, if you uh, went along uh, the Coronado Bridge, has been uh, at Campbell Marine being refit. It's about a $75,000 job. We're going to walk down here towards the uh, swimming pool area, where, as I say, on the sun deck, this is 12 stories up. Uh, still a lot of work going on here. They're going to have a party here tonight. The ship will actually take passengers on tomorrow, and then it goes out tomorrow evening. And here's a man that knows all about the work that has been going on here. This is the skipper. This is Captain Thomas Wilding, and you have, Wilden, I'm sorry, you have been uh, actually overseeing all of this work. It has to be kind of exciting now in the final stages. Yes, indeed. Uh, after, with the, actually, with the bed capacity of 1,900 passengers. But what we call uh, full ship, it is, uh, if you count, two passengers in each cabin, which ends up with 1,500 passengers. Captain, we want to wish you well. Have an excellent cruise, and I know we're going to be seeing a lot of you because he'll be coming into San Diego into port here on every Thursday. You can get down here and have a look at this uh, vessel. Now, I told you there's a party going on here. These two gentlemen are responsible for the party. This is Keith Boski, and this is uh, Paul Bennett. Paul, you put this together. Tell us about it very quickly. Okay, the Royal Caribbean Cruise Line, of course, launching their new ship here. We're very generous, and they'd like to help Can Survive, which is an organization that helps people who survive cancer. And the, it's, it's going to be just a fun evening and a fun time. I hope everybody comes down to enjoy themselves. People can still come down, see the ship, and buy a ticket, right? That is correct. It's $15, and uh, there's going to be some entertainment. There'll be food, and there'll be lots of other things here. So certainly everyone should come down. All right. It's down here, uh, tied up, down at the cruise line uh, facility here. If you want to see an absolutely incredible vessel come down, it's here. And if you want your money to go to a worthy cause. Old guy. Oh, no. Oh. oh. Some, but we've got to find them a home without the kind of floors that we have in a television <laughs> studio. Why don't we come back to me, because that's a little, a little kind of unpleasant to look at. Oh, poor old guy. He's fine. Is he on the carpet? <laughs> All right, Samson, we're going to find you a home tomorrow, and it will have carpeting in it. It won't have the kind of floors that we have in a television studio. That's Fluffy first. over there. What is, what is this one? Three. This is Muffy. Oh, is fluffy and, and Muffy. Buffy. Sounds like a La Jolla team. <laughs> 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 Hugo, get Ambrose down the bottom of the black one, Fluffy and Muffy and Buffy, two. right here. <laughs> 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 they are the the rabbits. They're six uh, weeks uh, old. And uh, they're, they're litter mates. Well, you know, there's a scheme going around that's costing people their houses. Your hair's not some beautiful gown just toss away when it looks tired or raggedy. No. You give it Pantene. Pantene can take your hair and make it better because Pantene has a provitamin formula that penetrates. Your hair gets stronger. Right is on location there to show us how they did, Jack. I'll tell you, you talk about a fishing trip. This one is the one that didn't get away. The crew is right behind me here. They are just icing up the champagne because you guys went fishing. You came back with a pretty good uh, load, would you say? Uh, definitely. Definitely. Well, this is the first albacore uh, catch. I'm going to work my way around the back of the boat here so that you can have a look. This is the big game. Came in about 10 minutes ago. And take a look at some of the fish out here. The first big albacore catch. This is the uh, skipper. This is uh, Jack Slade. Jack uh, Sl Slater. Slater. Jack, uh, would you say that uh, this was excellent fishing? Excellent fishing. How far out were you? 133 miles from San Diego. We were fishing about 22 miles from San Martin Island. And uh, how many uh, albacore did you pick up? 105 albacore for two days of fishing. All right. The season traditionally starts around the 4th of July and goes through the end of September. A little bit late, but it's here. Better late than never, that's for sure. Did you leave a few of these guys out there? I think so. The guys that are down there today, there's six boats down there today, and they're all catching a little bit today, too. All right, the gentleman over here uh, next to Jack. Very good fight. How long did it take you to land him? Uh, not that long. I was using pretty heavy line. <laughs> oh, here comes the champagne. This is it. Hey, the captain. Uh, <laughs> 
the captain gets what you get when you get a big catch. I mean, there are literally fish all over the deck of the big game out here. If you are a sports fisherman, take heart. The albacore season is now here. They're off the coast, and, uh, well, all I can say is they're loading up boats ready to go out. That's pretty much the way it is down here, Stephen. They are having a good time. Just now, a matter of getting these fish off up there to the fishermen. As I say, they came in about, uh, about 10, 12 minutes ago, and this is the first big catch of the season. You know, Jack, as always, Carol and I ask you to bring back some food. This time, just wait till it's in the little round cans and then bring it back. I'll mm -hmm. tell you what, if, if we can get Art to kind of follow me around here, I have yours already filleted. It's already in the box here, <laughs> ready to go, Stephen. It's all packaged up here for all you, right. so you don't have to worry. All right. Carol and I are very happy about that. We didn't want to see it in the original form like that. Thank right. you very much. Well, the rain turned to mud and it caused a major traffic accident in Akatia. You can see the water is still rushing down through the desert area. About 2 o'clock this afternoon, the skies simply opened up out here. It was monsoon conditions. And at one point, a lady motorist coming down uh, I-8 about a quarter of a mile west of Akatillo started a hydroplane, went across uh, the freeway and uh, hit the bridge embankment. One of the first people on the scene was Joe Ralph. He's a border patrolman from El Centro. He tells us what he saw as he arrived on the scene. As the vehicle came down the bottom of the grade, there was uh, water running across the interstate uh, in both the east and westbound lanes. All four lanes were covered in water, and the uh, vehicle couldn't negotiate the turn. It, it, so it appeared to us, it looked like she couldn't negotiate the turn. And she uh, went up and hit one of the stanchions of the bridges. The Mexican school bus had been parked right behind the uh, accident there. And while we were assisting the girl, another vehicle came up and started to do the same thing that she did. He couldn't negotiate the turn, he hydroplaned and he hit the uh, wall of the bridge in that car. They all had their seatbelts on, and they were able to get up and walk away without any injury at all. And that vehicle was towed, by the way. It was The front end was right under the bus. And then with that, another vehicle came up, could negotiate the turn, and hit the bus sideways and went under the, the front end of that car, went under the bus. And he just got a, the, it was a single occupant, the driver. He got a bump on the head, but he seemed to be okay. Again, that was the voice of uh, Joe Ralph. Uh, he was a border patrolman, happened to be on the scene, and you were looking at some pictures earlier, taken just really minutes ago of the water still rushing down through the desert there in Akatillo. Monsoon conditions, that's exactly what the people on the ground were telling us. Uh, the sky opened up for about a half an hour. Uh, they said the visibility was absolutely zero, and you couldn't see where you were going. And of course, as you heard, cars on the freeway were just hydroplaning literally across the pavement. Uh, right now, it is very clear out here. Water still running. Flash flood warnings have been posted all day and are still in effect, as I say, still clear uh, as we uh, make our way back towards San Diego. That's pretty much the way it is out here, Carol. Uh, very dangerous driving. If you're going to be in the desert, drive carefully. All right, Jack, you be careful, too. My See? Thanks. And, Who's that guy uh, in the back? Uh, 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 uh. She was. <laughs> Holy man, man. We gotta get any hot? Hot? Who's that guy in the back? Oh, we'll find out how hot it was in answer to the market. <laughs> Welcome back. There is more to come in our second half this morning, including... Damn that Mercury! Yes, a He's demonstration. He's still here. He won't leave. <laughs> <laughs> he, well, he's going to be around to help us show how to make great baby food from scratch using your microwave oven. You can read that. And Gary Shangle has everything from art to food to build. He's very good. We're wrapping up our sweetheart makeover contest today. Here. Three lucky couples <laughs> will receive the full treatment <laughs> from Rivka Grub good. of Rivka International very good. and V. Avante Hairstyles of Pacific Beach. Yeah. All right. And the winners will also get a new outfit from Bullock's Department Store and appearances on Inside SD to San show Diego. off... San Diego. San Diego SD to show off their new look. Winners will be announced on Monday inside. I'm chewing gum. It's got to San Diego. No kids, I'm allowed. <laughs> <laughs> Thank Jack, you, Gilbert. Please help us out here, Jack. It's your turn. It's all know. you for your baby for and your child. Baby and child. And Damn for that mercury. <laughs> <laughs> I knew that was coming. <laughs> you knew that. So you got to see it. I, I don't know. know. It's coming. No mercury in the baby food. <laughs> no. Thank you, Eileen. You're Thank a good you. boy. When we come back, we're going to show how to, uh, how to. Uh, <laughs> Damn that mercury. Gary Shendel with the new movies in town. <laughs>
including this one with Holly Hunter Mr. and Mr. Dreyfus. You know, oh, Dreyfus, I've seen you? that twice already. Good movie. I hope you both have a lifetime of great sex and joy. Have a good weekend, all right? Thanks. Coming up next. Damn that mercury. <laughs> we'll check in with the 10 newsroom. Generic news. Generic news. It means news not about any particular country. We'll be Just right back. Just generic news. It could be anything, anything at all. Just also, women who harbor deep resentments and emotional wounds from their own mothers and out-of-work comedians. I'm, I'm really upset about these interruptions. <laughs> Gilbert I don't Godfrey care about won't be here. the war Take so care much. Of one it we'll just that they interrupt. Kate Dismissed it, excused it, and gone forth would have just it would have driven us women in an uproar. Clearly, it's a murky political issue because while Professor Anita Hill feels certain she's a victim, one of Clarence Thomas's Senate supporters tipped his hand on the importance of sexual harassment. She will be injured and destroyed and belittled and hounded and harassed, real harassment, different than the sexual kind, just plain old Washington variety harassment. If this, if he's Janet Cohen's students at San Diego State realize it will be a difficult investigation. It's the same type of thing as if you um, to say that you've been raped by someone. You're the one that's put on trial all of a sudden. Everyone's saying, well, why didn't she do this before? Why didn't she do this? Blah, 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 blah. Why? Instead of him being the one who should have to defend himself, it's her. They wonder about the timing of a 10-year-old allegation. I just hope if it was, if, you know, if it did in fact happen or whatever, she was harassed, that it would have come out no matter what. But they seem to agree no one will know what happened between Hill and Thomas until there's a full investigation. I feel like we don't have the facts. Mm -hmm. I mean, that, we don't know but, I know that's yet. your interpretation. But yes. regardless of the facts, it's, it's sort of separate. How do you feel about birds? <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, we're interested in if you would like to join a uh, Longshoreman's bird study group. Now, you're out. Oh, that's a shame. Any other nature study you'd be interested in? Butterflies? Girls. 